Hey, Levi Allen here. In my latest biking video, Freedom, got a lot of questions about the process of making it. So I figured it'd be a great opportunity to make a behind the scenes video uh, and sort of answer some of those questions, but also share a bit of uh, my editing process and how I brought the whole thing together. I love it when you have to think about talking and it makes you like such a dummy. <laughs> right on, so here we are filming uh, the second day and we hiked in this morning about an hour up to another spot. Um, this has been been a lot of hiking, still pretty sore from yesterday, but you know, it's good. Been rocking the H1 uh, straight into the camera on sort of a gimmicky shock mount with rubber bands. I um, actually broke the mount this morning, so I had to tape it, um, but it's working so far. And the stereo mic works great because uh, it gets really good sound, um, especially as the riders come by. And so hoping to step it up on sound in this video. Forgot to press record. <laughs> I'll make him do it again. <laughs> what we're shooting on is uh, the Canon 60D, kind of an older DSLR, but uh, still holds together pretty well. And it's the only camera I got, but uh, we're shooting with two of them, mine and a buddy's, uh, so that way we can go in between um, the slider shots and glide cam shots uh, pretty quick. Okay, I'm rolling for real this time. Rolling! Oh yeah, the slider and the focus pull at the same time. Always gotta watch the shot. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just gonna dive into some of the questions I got asked about the project. And so Aaron Dowd asks, what did you shoot with? And as I said, I shot this project with my trusty Canon 60D and the lenses I used were my 35 and 85 Rokinon lenses. These are both F1.4 full manual lenses. Uh, they work great. They're really inexpensive as far as lenses go. And uh, I also use my Sigma 50 millimeter F1.4 for a few shots and then I used a borrowed Tukina 11 to 16 for some of the wides and so uh, those were the lenses I used um, and so Ben Tolson asked another question uh, how did you capture the stereo audio and so as I said I used my zoom h1 just mounted on top of the camera direct in and then using magic lantern allowed me to have audio meters right across the top and so I could see when I was peaking uh, for the most part I just left the gain pretty low and then in post-production just raves the gain on the audio tracks so that way you could hear it. And then some other questions I got were, how did you get those flying shots? And so this is the questions that I get a lot. And these days with all the drones out there, uh, a lot of people go, oh, is that like a drone? Like, how did you get a drone shot like that? But no, I don't have a drone yet. Uh, all these shots were actually done with just a DIY uh, sort of gimbal stabilizer that I have. And so it's kind of like a glide cam, uh, but it was just an eBay version that I bought, I mean, five years ago now. and. I just modified it so that way it could carry more weight and so the center column I just made it longer uh, just glued some things together bolted some things and so it's only like a $90 stabilizer uh, that I mount my camera on and then literally I just run around in the forest <laughs> and so I'm just running through the trees running around uh, I used to try to run as fast as I could all the time uh, but usually what I found out is that those shots don't look so great and so now I've tried to just move more steady and slowly and that's how I also got some of these like jib looking shots. I climbed up a tree and did sort of this jib looking shot. Okay, and so now I'm just gonna dive into opening up the project in Premiere and sort of just walking through, I guess, some of the stuff that I did in the editing process and hopefully you can learn some things. Again, if you have any questions about this at all, just feel free to tweet at me at any time and I'd love to answer them uh, or answer them in upcoming tutorials or projects. And that would be really helpful because I wanna help teach more stuff. So let's dive into it. Okay, so here we are inside of Premiere and I got my finished edit right here in front of me. And so as we dive in to look at this, I mean, there's a few things going on here, but I'll just, uh, yeah, I'll just sort of talk about a few of them. And so most of the shots I added on warp stabilizer. And so one of the things that I really don't like in videos is when a warp stabilizer is a crutch for crappy camera work. And so I admit sometimes I've used it on shots that were pretty unusable and it made them usable. Uh, or 
maybe it's debatable that it was usable because what Warp Stabilizer does, if you're not familiar, it's just a stabilizing plugin. And so it takes the image that it sees and it attempts to stabilize it by warping the image in certain ways. And so I do love Warp Stabilizer quite a bit because, you know, if you get those little micro uh, vibrations when you're shooting, or I mean, if you're a little bit shaky just because you're shaky, you know, Warp Stabler, Stabilizer really does a fantastic job of getting rid of those. And so on a lot of the shots, I add Warp Stabilizer right away. Uh, and so you add it and then my favorite setting of smoothness to have it at is 33%. And so on default, when you apply it, it's at 50, but I like having it at 33. And so I find that is a perfect uh, middle ground between having it too stabilized so that way it doesn't get warpy, um, but it also gets rid of some of these micro vibrations. And so if this, I'll watch the shot and if I see uh, some warp happening, then I'll lower it down to let's say 22%. But if the shot has a lot of movement going on uh, or there's just, a lot of issues that I can tell right away, then I actually go over here into the advanced settings uh, and then click detailed analysis. And so I do this on a lot of the shots that I'm like either running with my glide cam or I mean, there's just lots of movement. And so the, it just needs that extra, and that usually works really well. And so when I turn on detailed analysis, uh, it works pretty great. And then I'll still keep smoothness around 33%. It does a great job. But yeah, that's kind of just an overview of what I did. There wasn't a whole lot of fancy stuff. I mean, I chopped up my clips, I did a rough edit, I did a more fine-tuned edit, I worked on the audio, I brought all the clips into Lightroom, I then exported all the clips from Lightroom, relinked the media, and then a lot of the shots I just simply added some warp stabilizer um, and fine-tuned that adjustment so it didn't look too warpy. And that was kind of it. Right on. I hope that this video was helpful, maybe shared some ideas with you for your next project or maybe learn something or two. If you have any questions, I mean, Connect with me on social media. I'm on Twitter, I'm on Facebook. Get in touch with me. I'd love to hear your questions. I'd love to be able to answer them. That's important to me. I wanna answer actual questions that are relevant to you. And so I run my website, leftcoast.co. You can head on over there and I actually run something called the Left Coast Collective. And it's just sort of an email list and you can get on board with that. And if you join the Left Coast Collective, you can actually email me directly any of your questions and I will answer them. And so I will read everything that you send and yeah, it's just a great way that I can help you guys as I learn and grow. So yeah, head over to leftcoast.co. Love to hear from you guys. Uh, have a great week. See ya.